So we need to expand our thinking. This, you know, the, 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 it's the out-of-the-box thinking. What does that mean? You know, have you ever heard this one before? Oh, but we've never, really never done it that way before. Oh, we've never done it that way before. <sighs> it won't work. And worse yet, what if it does? I go to a, 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 a church that um, we've been in, involved with for about six years. And six years ago when we started going to this church, it was about 1,200 people, which in Michigan is a big church. Um, this year they run anywhere about 5,500 to 6,000 people on any given weekend. Wow is right. Wow. They built a new building a couple years ago. You know, when they were 1,200 people, they planned for expansion, so they built it for 2,500 people, and now they've got 5,500 people. So they just kicked off the building campaign again. Wow. But they've never done it that way before. And what they had to come down to was that there are core fundamentals, and we look at the core fundamentals, and the core fundamentals don't change, and anything else, we're going to throw out. If it's there because it's tradition, and we've always done it, how many of us have traditions at work because we've just always done them that way before? But they're not core fundamentals. They don't have to do with anything, do they? You know, I had to sit down and challenge, at, at Telesource, I had to sit down and challenge everything that we do and why we do it. And a lot of things we did simply because that's how we do them. You know, well, what's the rationale behind it? I don't know. And so you start changing some of those traditions. Oh, my word, I might as well dye my hair green, right? It's very painful. It's scary. But sometimes we need to expand our thinking and get rid of some of those things. So how do we expand our thinking? How many of us get into a rut? You know, I tell my wife I'm not a rut. I'm just consistent. <laughs> I eat the same thing every day for lunch, every day probably four days a week at the office. Every morning I make a salad, and I like field greens, and I like, you know, either goat cheese or feta cheese, which is also goat cheese, you know, that on it, and I put roasted red peppers, and I put chicken, and I freeze chicken, and I cut it, and I freeze it, so I just pull out a frozen package, and I dump it in, and I, I like Hot Rod Bob's Greek salad dressing. <laughs> Once or twice a week, I might go like raspberry vinaigrette. <laughs> every day, 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 every day. People say, don't you get bored with that? No, I'm consistent. It's consistent. I, this is what I like to eat. Why wouldn't I make it every day? But I'm kind of in a rut, you know? I might try lettuce instead of field greens next week. <laughs> but how do we change? How do we expand our thinking? Is it easy? Anybody in here over 30? <laughs> you know? it's, it's, it gets a little more difficult to expand your thinking. So let's ask some questions. When's the last time you read a business book? How many of you have read a business book in the last six months? Good for you. Congratulations. You should be reading a business book every, every 90 days. And my wife tells me for every business book I read, for every three business books I read, need, I, read I need to read one on relationships. <laughs> Whoops. That was, a, that was a new mandate about it two, three years ago. Tim, how many business books did you read last year? I don't know, maybe a dozen? How many books have you read in the last five years on relationships? They write those. They write, they write books on relationships. How about that? It's amazing. So, read a business book. Take the time. And, you know, grab a book on relationships, too. Some of you in the, in the Southeast, I talked about the five love languages. That's when my wife mandated it. You know, go grab it if you haven't read it already. Read a business book. How many of you drive the same way to work every day? Every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Drive a different way to work. You don't? Good for you. My son this summer, to the next one, how to play a new instrument. My son this summer, he's, he wants to be an attorney, and he's in, he's in college. He's 21 years old. Um, anybody have kids in high school? Anybody have kids in high school that maybe aren't doing real well? <laughs> My son graduated high school with a 1.8 grade point average. He graduated. He graduated. Seriously. Six weeks before, I'm like, dude, tell me, you are seriously going to graduate. You are going to walk down that aisle, cap down, they're going to hand you a thing, right? Right? I mean, if not, I'm not even showing up. You promised me. You promised me you're going to be. He has a 385 in college. He decided it's important. High school isn't important. High school is like a warm-up. <laughs> but now he decided that he wants to go to law school. To go to law school, he wants to go to a, to a top 25 law school. To go to a top 25 law school, he's got to keep a GPA. So he wants to do that. And so this summer, he decided that he needed to expand his mind, and so he's teaching himself piano. 
over the internet. He found a site that'll teach him piano because they said you can learn a foreign language or you can teach yourself a new instrument. Those are two ways to expand your mind and keep yourself thinking and keep yourself going. And he hated foreign languages. He's taking Spanish in college um, and he hates it. And so he decided to, to learn a new instrument. And so he's a, an exceptionally good guitar player, um, but he decided to teach himself piano this summer. And so I walk home and I say to my wife, you are a saint, you are a saint, you are a saint. Doom, doom, doom. Oh, you are a saint, honey. How long has he been doing this? About an hour. <laughs> you know, laptop sitting on top of the piano. Uh, uh. Anybody play the piano? You know, no, honey, pick your foot up off that pedal. Pick the foot up off the pedal. You know, how do you do that? I want to sustain it. Never mind. Expand your thinking. When's the last, last, last time you look, seriously looked at the other guy's website? Pick the other guy. I don't care who you make the other guy. You know, you can call him anybody. You know, call him your competitors at the office. Call him your competitors in the network. Call him your competitors down the street. You know, when's the last time that you seriously looked at the other guy's website and looked at it for value as opposed to tear apart? Expand your thinking. When's the last time you had a date with your spouse? <laughs> oh, he is a romantic fool. Hers was her drive to the airport to come here. Romantic, romantic guy. You know what? You need to expand your thinking. Oh, my marriage is in a rut. Oh, no, we're consistent, honey. You want to improve your relationship? Improve your relationship. It rests with you. When's the last time you took your IT director to lunch? Yeah. <laughs> she said always because he never has money. If you're not meeting with your IT director to find out the direction of the company, then you're doing yourself a disservice. So get him off the premises, invite him to lunch, expand your thinking. So we need the first thing that we need to do when we talk about uh, how do we lead is we need to expand our, our thinking. If you expand your thinking, you're going to be ready to lead because you're going to be ready to move. So if you're stuck in this rut and you're always doing the same thing ever, all the same time over and over and over again, you're not ready to move. So how do you lead if you're not ready to move? 